to my channel or if you're new, welcome. I really just wanna run through all of the steps that needed to be taken from point A to point B to get into Ghana. There was just a lot that needed to be done and I wanna make sure that if you're traveling to Ghana as an American citizen, you aren't missing any of these steps because I would hate for you to get stuck at the border <laughs> and have to go back home. So first things first, let's talk stabby stabby. I don't know how sensitive YouTube is and I'm really not trying to get flagged for any talk about the you know panoramic that we're still in. So if I'm using code language, don't mind me. First things first is looking up where you can get for yellow fever. You're gonna wanna schedule that as soon as you can. Um, at least a month prior, just make sure. I know that appointments are sometimes hard to get and you don't want to end up paying an arm and a leg for some expedited like last minute thing. So just schedule uh, the yellow fever well before your trip. But that is something that you're going to need to show when you're in Ghana. That's the last step in customs right before they finally let you through. So make sure you get that. Don't come without it. <laughs> so let's talk pills. When I was at the doctor, she gave me malaria pills. The medical term is a tobaquan. So basically, uh, there's there are these little red tablets that you're gonna get. Um, you're gonna need to take it. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head, but I believe it was like four days prior to the trip, every single day that you're on your trip, and then like four days after, something like that. So it helps prevent you from catching malaria. It's not required that you get it, but my doctor recommended it, so I'll let, you know, I'm telling y'all about it. So she also gave us another pill. I'll put it on the screen, but it was a pill that she gave us just in case we caught a strain of polio or anything like that from the food and you got diarrhea. It was a pill to basically like ease your, your stomach if you caught it. I suggest you get it. I personally didn't actually end up having to use it. And my boyfriend didn't have to use it either, but it's nice to just have with you as a precaution. Now we had to take the, you know, the little to make sure it was negative before we came. Now, so that's like the medical side of things. Now for the visa. This visa application, it was a lot of steps and it was a lot of documents that were needed. I feel like I, maybe I might've done like overkill with my application, but I'm just gonna kind of let y'all know everything. Basically looks like this. This is the page. Uh, this is the expedited shipping times. And then these are the prices. Passports and visas, I go down to visa application. So it takes me to this page. Visa application, that's what I clicked on and it takes me down here. I do English, country of residence, United States, pre-qualification instructions. So take a second to read all of these instructions. Read this requirements, they give you like a checklist of what you'll need, blah, 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 all this stuff. Read through all of this. Pricing, payment methods, refund policy, photographs, they tell you everything. So read through all of this. Countries that are exempt from entry visa requirements. So if you're from these countries, I believe you're exempt. Read this again, I just skimmed it. When you've read, Proceed. Y'all, I'm just doing a test run uh, just to kind of get through the steps. So I clicked on the individual visa application. Me and my boyfriend each clicked on that. So purpose of travel, I said tourist, passport type, ordinary, country of residence, US, visa type, single entry. Now, if you want the multiple entry because you're someone who's gonna travel to Ghana several times, then of course do that one. Nationality. Where's American? American, nationality at birth. I just said American again. Uh, not sure what they were trying to, I'm not sure, I don't know. Cause it's not like they said ethnicity and I didn't want to cause any confusion cause I am a, the child of an immigrant but I didn't want to cause confusion. So I just said American for both. Um, left this one blank. Processing office, Washington DC. Service type, again. If you're in a rush, expedite, if not standard. Mode of submission, I said postal services. So then put in your first name, surname is your last name. Mode of communication, I email, text, put your number, put your email, yada, yada. Title, if you want, put your title. Your last name again, that's indicated on your passport. So literally, I just put the same thing. Your first name, your maiden name, your gender, your marital status, 
and then your occupation. I honestly don't know why they're asking, but whatever, put your birthday. So for place of birth, I just wrote United States of America. So don't get all specific writing the town or whatever, just say United States of America. Um, so travel details, temporary tourist visitor, duration of stay, put the number of days. So date of departure, I put the date that I'm arriving in Ghana. That kind of confused me, but yeah, put the date that you will be arriving in Ghana. So I guess you can't even apply too early on. You have to apply within 90 days of your trip. Um, do you have a return ticket? Yes. Um, date of last visit, I believe I leave. It's not, there's no asterisk here, so I left that blank because I personally had never been to Ghana before. And then financial mode. Actually, I think I said cash and card, honestly. Um, financial means, this just means if you are going to be arriving into Ghana with cash, how much? Uh, Cause down here in the asterisk, it said basically like, there's like a limit on how much cash you can bring. I believe I just wrote $200 and honestly that ended up being false anyway. Cause me, we forgot to <laughs> get cash before we came. So I just put 200, you put $20, zero, whatever. Or if you're gonna come with cash, say how much. Now we're on the second page. You're gonna input, import your passport number, place of issue, date of issue, blah, blah, blah. All this is on your password, passport, and then answer these questions. And no, next. Step three, put in your contact information. So at this point, I just put in my address and then the mailing address. Put in your work details. And then, so name and physical address of reference in hotel. I don't know why it has like the little asterisks on both of these. So it said you needed two references. I don't know why. So we literally just put the hotel information, put in the 12 digit phone number here, and then we just copied and pasted it, put it in again. And then again, name of reference employer, like I just said, not applicable. Step four, if you're completing this application on behalf of somebody else, then I guess you would fill in their information. But if you're filling in this for yourself, just say not applicable, that's what I did. Um, and then requirements checklist. So these are all the things that you're going to need to upload with your application online. And you notice here that the valid yellow fever is not asterisked, but we uploaded a picture anyway. So, uh, da -de da da So then the last step is to basically say that you understood all the questions in the application. And then please ensure that all the information provided is correct. Obviously I will not be hitting submit because I just kind of BS everything. Um, but then at this point you would pay the visa fee. You would click your payment option. So online payment, payment method, pick your card. And then when you hit submit, payment will pop up. So at that point, you can upload your documents. You choose the file, you select it. I just picked a random image in my folder. So it's gonna say not uploaded. So the mistake that we were making before was we would upload all of our files or whatever, and then it still said not uploaded, even though the file was showing right here. You see how it says no file chosen in here. It has whatever file, I just chose a random thing. So you need to upload it first. So after you've clicked upload, then it should say view file then you can close and continue. So you're gonna select your file first, then you're gonna click upload. It should say view file when the file's uploaded. And then when you've uploaded all the files, then you can close and continue and then hit submit. Make sure that your documents are the correct size. So for example, if you try to upload something that's too big, whatever, it'll let you know that that file's not gonna work. Um, but yeah, after that you submit, it's gonna bring you to a page with the receipt but you'll get like a one page sheet like this with a barcode at the top. This is what I printed out. This is your visa application. And this is what I included in the envelope. Okay, so when it came to shipping our application, we shipped it out, I wanna say like three weeks in advance maybe. And we, we got a response back like in a couple of days because we paid for expedited shipping because we were scared that I don't know, for some reason it wasn't gonna come back fast enough. So yeah, if you just apply in advance, you won't need to pay the extra money for expedited shipping. Because me and my boyfriend were flying to Ghana together, the way we did it, uh, I filled out all my documentation, he filled out all of his and we printed it all out. And I put mine, we each put our paperwork into separate envelopes. We then put the two envelopes together and put them together in a bigger envelope and then just mailed it off like that. One, to avoid one person getting approved, one person not. Like we we weren't trying to deal with that. And then two, just because it was cheaper like to ship, because I don't know why the shipping cost of mailing the application out, 
I'll put the price on the screen. We had to pay to ship, and then we actually had to pay for the return shipping too, which I thought was a little much, but that's what we had to do. We did all of it through FedEx. Also, there's an option on the uh, embassy like website to pay for the shipping return label through their website. They have like a partnership with FedEx or something like that. So we physically went to FedEx to have it shipped to them. So we paid at the FedEx location that we were at to ship it. But then we paid online through their like FedEx return label thing on the website. I'll show you a snippet on the screen. We paid for the return shipping through their website. So what we did is after we paid, we printed out the receipt for that. And we also stuck that in the envelope with the application. So as far as the documentation that we included, with the application, our flight info. So we printed out, we went onto the website that we purchased our flights with. So in our case, it was TAP Portugal. Um, and we just printed out our flight information, mine and his, and we included that into our separate folders. We also printed out the receipt that we got from the hotel. Like after you book your hotel, the confirmation like letter or email or whatever, with the, make sure you print that out, the hotel name, a uh, confirmation number, booking number, the dates that you're gonna be there and the dates you're leaving. And if you're going to see family, then you don't need, obviously you put maybe their, uh, I think you input the family's address in your application, but because we are going to a hotel, we included that. They're also going to ask for a bio data page. So it's literally just your passport. You know, when you open up your passport, the sheet with your picture and all that, we took a picture of that on our phones and then I just, put that picture into a Word doc and printed it out. So that's the bio data page. This is the part where maybe it was overkill. I don't know. Uh, they made it seem like you needed the yellow fever card to get approved. But now I'm realizing, I don't really think you need the yellow fever card to get approved to go to Ghana. You just need that when you're in Ghana physically, but we didn't want to take any risk or any chances. So we waited to get the yellow fever first. And then we took pictures of the yellow book and put the screenshot of the picture in the application as well, we printed it out. So the undertaking letter. Y'all, this was confusing to me cause it's like, I don't, we don't, we don't know anyone in Ghana. Like there was so much like, who's your host and da da da. We don't have a host. I don't know anyone. Oh my God, like that was really stressing me out. I don't have a host. I don't know anybody. We're going to Ghana for the first time. So because I was traveling with my boyfriend, we just wrote each other's undertaking letters. I don't even know if this is correct, but this is just what I did. So basically the letter reads, uh, and I'll put a screenshot of our letter too. Basically like, dear Bisa officer, I, Miss Rochelle, wanted to inform you that my partner, uh, Darian, holding passport, blah, 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 would like to visit Accra for sightseeing, tourism, slash holiday purposes along with me. I hereby undertake all the responsibility of my partner during our stay in Ghana. Thank you, warm regards. Like that was the undertaking letter. And then for him, it was just flipped. Like I, Darian, want to inform you that my partner, Rochelle, blah. Cause like, we don't have a host. We don't know anyone in Ghana who can like vouch for us or something. So if you're doing a solo trip to Ghana, people say you can use like the hotel name in your undertaking letter. So like maybe if you just give the hotel a phone call and just say like, can I have a staff member's name? Or like, who's the general manager? Like, can I use their name in this letter? And then just say, same template. I, Mr. G hotel or Mrs. Hotel manager uh, want to inform you that, uh, put your name, holding passport number, blah, 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 would like to visit Africa for sightseeing and tourism. Ooh, I don't know if the hotel is going to say they take responsibility for you, but maybe take that last sentence out and then send it. Like, I, I don't understand the purpose of the letter, but that's how they do it. We printed that out and that went into each of our envelopes. And then let's see what else. Oh, yeah. And then the application form. We printed out the visa application that we filled out online and included that into our individual envelopes as well. You're going to need to ship your passport with it. I forgot that step. So we, uh, we needed to take our passports and include that in the envelope when we ship it out to them because they're going to actually stamp your passport uh, with the Ghana like entry thing. And then they put like a sticker or something in there and then they ship your passport back to you. So that's also why I was very particular about the shipping. I made sure it was FedEx and like secure shipping, like, cause my passport was in there. I'm not trying to have it lost it willy nilly in the mail. So again, as a US citizen, you're not shipping this to Ghana, by the way. 
um, I don't know if I specified this earlier, you're shipping it to DC. So it's the US, em or sorry, the Ghana Embassy in DC. That was really it, y'all. So we shipped that out. We got the response back and it was real cute. They sent us the little congratulations or something like that. Like you, you've been approved to enter Ghana. This is so cute, little letter. And our passports, I assume, are inside because it feels bulky. Entering Ghana. Now we had to take the, you know, the little mm, to make sure it was negative before we came. Now, I understand we're in a panoramic. Everyone, you know, businesses took a hit. I'm sure airports took a hit financially. Maybe they're just trying to make their coins back. This is before we got onto the plane. We were about to board the plane and the flight attendant was like, if you don't have this form, if you didn't pay for this test or whatever, you can't even get on the plane. And we were like, what? So I'm gonna put the link on the screen, um, fill that out and pay for your test. And again, you might be thinking, oh, I already took a test at, at Walgreens over here in the US. They don't care. I'm here to tell you right now, <laughs> they don't care. They wanna make a dollar. That's really what this is. So back to what I was saying about the airports. They want to make a dollar. Basically, if, you're, if you are a Ghanaian citizen, it's $50 uh, for them to do it. And if you're not a Ghanaian citizen, it's 150 US dollars, mind you, US dollars to get it done. Even if you already had a test from wherever up, they don't care. They want you to take it there. So if we paid online, I think you can pay when you get there too, but the flight attendant was telling us that we couldn't board the plane if we didn't show proof that we paid online. So we ended up paying for it in the airport before boarding the plane because we didn't even know this existed. So fast forward again, when you get off the plane, like literally the plane lands, boop, they open the doors. And before you can even like, they have built like a little hallway system starting from the plane. <laughs> Basically, you can't get into the airport unless you go through the little tunnel system they created. And within that system, there's like a bunch of different checkpoints. The first checkpoint is this health form. Fill this out either before you get there or when you land, but make sure this is filled out. That's the first thing that they're gonna check for. The next checkpoint was the thing. If you didn't pay in advance, you pay there. Or if you did pay in advance, you just show them the receipt and then you get that done and then you have to wait. I'm probably missing some things in between. There was a lot of like, let me see your passport, da da da, da, da like just. So we made it through checkpoint like 35 there's also like this green like piece of paper or something that you need to fill out so we were told to get out of line to fill this out and then we get back in line to go through i don't know where you can access that paper except in person so that one you just have to wait till you get to the airport i highly highly suggest you pack a pen because it'll save you so much time. We were waiting for so long because we needed a pen because everyone obviously was like, what is this form we need to fill out? So no one had a pen. There was a line for the pens. Bring your own pen, please. Just pack a pen, put it in your pocket, put it in your purse, bag, whatever, bring a pen. We gotta take your picture. You know what's crazy? I thought I just went through customs because the sign said immigration. Maybe that was not customs. Customs, the sign for customs over there. Yes, we did. All right, I think we see it. So we went down to the first floor where the departures was. We took the elevator straight down to the first floor and then we walked all the way to the end of the road. I feel so much better, y'all. We got our results negative. So now we're heading back to the airport and yeah, this better be a smooth process and I will see y'all in Portugal. Let me just run through everything from beginning to end. First step, you get the stabby stabby to get your yellow card. Next step, you apply for the visa. You get approved. Next step, pay for the online test. Pay online. Next step, fill out the health form. 
online as well. Next step, make sure you have a pen. <laughs> Fill out that green paper, because that's gonna be needed to get through customs. And then the next step is to just make sure you have your passport like easily accessible in a fanny pack or something, because you're gonna be pulling that out a few times. Uh, and then have the yellow card with you as well to pull that out. And yeah, I feel like a lot of the process was just waiting in line and waiting for results and da 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 da. So it was a lot of waiting. Whole thing took an hour and a half, but realistically, as far as like the actual stuff you needed, it was just kind of like online forms and the physical uh, passport and the yellow card and then that green paper that they're gonna you're gonna get at the airport when you land. And then we got in. I hope this helps. <laughs> Safe travels, guys. Amazing.